Many coins are beautiful to look at, such as the reverse of this 1883 Carson City dollar, which is in mint condition. And they offer collectors satisfaction and enjoyment as they appreciate their beautiful collection. Note, for example, how the nice frosty surface gives it a cartwheel effect as I rotate the coin. One drawback, however, to collecting coins, especially silver coins, is when one is not careful of how they store the coin. So rather than ending up protecting their coin, they end up creating further damage to hinder the value and appreciation of the collection. Whenever one buys a loose, ungraded coin, so, and they're not even put in a 2x2 two two holder, they sometimes are packaged by the co dealer into a nice vinyl flip. So the coin would go slip inside here where I stuck my thumb, close it, and you're on the way. And these flips offer an ease of uh, transport for the coin, as well as one side you can put a little uh, square piece of paper to document the price of the coin, what the coin is, the condition, etc. One drawback about these flips is that they contain PVC. PVC tends to damage coins, and especially with rare coins, it can affect its value. So these flips are not always bad though, because some of them, like the one in my hand, is bad for a coin. And other ones, like this one here, it's a little more rigid. It lacks PVC, so it is good for a coin. So let me show you the one, how to identify which ones are bad and which ones are good. So this one, this flip, you see how it's rigid. And now this flip, that's bad, contains PVC, you notice how it's more flexible. So that is how you can tell them apart. Here I have a beautiful shiny silver quarter. One thing is, it looks beautiful, but in reality, it has PVC damage from being stored in a bad flip. As I turn the coin, notice how it does have a little greenish hue to it. So that lets you know that this coin actually has some PVC damage. Here I have an 1895 Orleans Mint silver dollar. It's fairly an expensive coin except in this case, if you notice on the highlights where the hairlines is and the bonnet of Lady Liberty and all the high points on the, on the relief of the coin, there is a slight greenish hue to it. So this coin has some slight PVC damage, and even though it's stored in a 2x2 two two flip, the fact that it's been in contact with the PVC over time has caused it to be damaged. So coins like these need to be cleaned sooner rather than later so that the PVC chemicals do not keep eating away at the surface of the coin. Not all coins exhibiting a greenish hue, however, have PVC damage. For example, this 1881 San Francisco Mint Morgan Dollar has a beautiful greenish sheen to it, but its natural oxidation, which is prized and, and commands a premium to a collector. Further enhancing this one specimen is the beautiful bullseye target toning on the coin. And coins like these are prized to collectors because of the beautiful colors and they need not be cleaned or preserved because they are natural toning which enhances the beauty of the coin. Here is an 1891 Carson City Morgan dollar. It has a nice pinkish hue to it, but if you notice it's stored in a bad flip. So this is the soft vinyl um, PVC containing flips that is not safe for a coin, so this coin will have to be removed from the flip. Note how this Morgan dollar is extremely shiny. Nevertheless, it has been improperly cleaned. So as you can see, the luster is unrealistic. You know, it's almost like a mirror, very shiny, blingy, but you don't really have the original luster that it had if it were uncleaned. So cleaning a coin generally diminishes its value. Here is another Morgan dollar that has been cleaned, 
And you notice how when I move it around, you can see some striations from cleaning it with something abrasive. This is no-no, which renderly, renders the coin worth only the metal that it was minted on. So in this case, it has value because of the silver, but it could have commanded nearly twice as much if it were in mint condition and uncleaned. But by cleaning the coin, it has no value to a collector, only value in the metal that it contains. Here is another really shiny Morgan dollar, and you notice it's got a lot of details still remaining on the surface of the coin. But because it has been cleaned, it is no longer a nice, expensive coin, but a cheap uh, coin only worth the value of the metal that it's minted in. To clean a coin properly, you need to have some acetone. Acetone is also known as nail polish remover because many ladies use it to remove nail polish off their fingers. So it can be bought easily at any store that has like women's uh, makeup products, you know. And it's not very expensive. A bottle like this one generally will cost around a dollar only. Because acetone tends to dissolve many varieties of plastic, it is safer to use a small glass dish or a jar to put the acetone in rather than to put it in something plastic that will dissolve it. Another useful tool at cleaning PVC damaged coins is a cotton swab like the one shown in the middle. One problem is you want to make sure you don't use a cotton swab where the stem is made out of plastic. This one here uses paper and they also make them out of wood but keep in mind that the plastic has the potential to dissolve in the acetone and completely ruin your cleaning process. You do not want to wipe a coin with anything and you want to make sure that the agent or the substance you set it on to dry is less likely to scratch the surface of the coin because if it's in mint condition even very minuscule hairline scratches can result in damaging the value of a coin. So here we have at the lower left a microfiber cloth that can help absorb and suck away the moisture from the acetone with out potentially scratching as readily as a paper towel would, for example. So the first step you're going to do to clean the coin is take some of the acetone and pour it into the glass dish. Just a little bit should suffice. You want to at least make sure the coin is submerged, but you don't want to pour too much and waste your precious acetone. So the coin that I'm going to clean to demonstrate to you is this quarter, which shows you can see the slight greenish hue when I angle it against the light. So this is the one I'm going to use to clean the PVC. So the first step will be to take the coin and submerge it in the acetone. Note how the coin is fully submerged in the acetone. You want to keep it in the acetone for at least 30 seconds to a minute. And, you know, this one has very light PVC damage, so soaking it in for a while is not necessarily, you know, but if you need to, you can soak it longer than a minute or two even. Okay, it is not recommended to touch acetone with your hands because it is a toxic chemical, but since I don't have any tongs with rubber tips or anything that I feel comfortable handling the coin with or I won't damage it, I'm going to use my hands, but I do not advise it, so do it at your own risk. So, oops. So you're going to take the coin, try not to touch the surface because you don't want to leave fingerprint smears, and I'm going to set it down on the microfiber cloth and let it dry out. Now we have the coin. You can see it has a nice frosty luster that it had to begin with. So we didn't remove the luster like we would have with any other cleaning agent. Thus we haven't destroyed the value of the coin. And you look at it in the light now when you flip it over, you see this back side, because it was sitting down, it still has a little greenish hue to it, but the other side doesn't. Now, 
since there is still a little greenish hue on the back, to demonstrate how to use the Q-tips to remove any excess, even though in this case I could easily soak it with the face down and the tails up into the acetone and remove the greenish hue. I'm going to show you how to remove the hue using a Q-tip in the proper way as to minimize any scratching and abrasion on the surface of the coin. Here we have the coin and as you notice the area right over here where I'm pointing has a little bit of greenish uh, hue from the PVC damage remaining on it. You're going to take the Q-tip, soak it in the acetone just briefly, and you're going to take it and you're going to roll it. You see how I'm rolling it? I am not wiping it. Wiping it is going to create abrasions, but rolling it is less likely to create an abrasion on the surface of the coin to maintain the beauty of the coin. So remember, do not wipe, but roll it. To further illustrate rolling, notice the tip of the Q-tip as I move my finger. It rolls. That's how you want it to move like a tire over the surface of the coin and not like a rag being wiped on the surface of a table. Now looking at the tail side of the coin after using the Q-tip and I roll it, you still see a little bit of, um, of the PVC damage because it's not going to be as effective as keeping it in the acetone for a few seconds. But in certain delicate situations, you may have to do that several times to remove the PVC off the surface of the coin. So while using the, a Q-tip is the way many people prefer, and in doing so, you, after doing a few rolls, you want to use the other side of a Q-tip for a few more rolls, and then you want to keep changing out Q-tips often so you don't keep wiping PVC that's taken up on, by the Q-tip back into the coin. But since this coin is not a very expensive coin, and it's really, even in mint condition, is not worth more than the silver it's minted in, I'm going to just set it in the dish and let it soak for a few seconds and enjoy a nice shiny PVC free coin. So one way you can ensure that you're going to help remove all the PVC off the coin when it's soaking in the acetone you could swirl it. I wouldn't swirl it too fast so that the coin doesn't slide on the surface of the container just so that you don't create as many scratches on the coin between the coin and the glass but you know just keeping it in there just sitting for a few minutes should be fine enough you know just you know different people have various preferences whether they want to swirl or not whether they want to use a q-tip but the end result is going to be virtually the same where you have less pvc on your coin so when you dry the coin you know and you, you want to just dab it on the cloth not really wipe it as i was explaining the bad parts of white, wiping the Q-tip on. Now you can see how the coin actually looks. You know, it's a lot shinier and you can see a lot less PVC than before. It still has a nice frosty luster to it, so here we have a nice beautiful coin. Looking at the reverse of this 1895 Orleans Mint silver dollar, you can actually see how the high areas of the coin have a lot of green on them. So this is one of the evidence that your coin will have PVC damage if stored incorrectly. In the case of the 1895 Morgan dollar, where the PVC damage is mainly prevalent on the high um, parts of the relief of the coin, the Q-tip method would be more efficient. Now you notice how I dip the Q-tip and it looks a little greenish. This was where I wiped that quarter from, so I'm going to actually use the cleaner side. So that looks a little better. And then I'm going to roll it on the coin. Note how it doesn't take the PVC off right away, but you have to do this repeatedly. So here I'm rolling it over and over and over. And as you notice, it is slowly disappearing. But this is one way you can minimize contact 
with the acetone if you have very expensive coins and are a little leery about using acetone so you can only clean the high spots but notice how this is actually working on the coin notice how the portions of the coin where you saw me put the Q-tip against with the acetone still is a little greenish but it has a little less PVC than the bottom of the coin where I did not rub with a Q-tip so this is something that takes a little longer or a little more work than just simply soaking it in the acetone I chose to completely soak the silver dollar in the acetone so now I'm, in, I'm drying it off unlike the quarter since this silver dollar was circulated as you can see when I soaked it in acetone you don't see any of the PVC on the high spots of the coin but one thing you can notice is the luster seems to have changed a little bit it had a nice even patina and now that patina is gone because the acetone removed some of the dirt from the coin so as you can see implementing a q-tip on a coin such as this one is more effective than on a coin that's in mint condition where you can just soak it in because there is no dirt to affect the patina other than the nice clean surface of the coin whereas this one you take away some of the dirt also and then it ruins the um, consistency of the dirt two key things to note when cleaning a coin with acetone if the coin is shiny and in mint condition but you want to just get rid of the green hues you can soak it in acetone and if the coin is a circulated coin and has a lot of patina to it that's not original mint condition you probably want to just rub a q-tip well not rub but roll a q-tip on the high points of the relief of the coin where the PVC damage is prevalent and not soak it in a dish with acetone.